Today, we are building our muscle on one of the most foundational skills in the data world, data modeling. Let's touch upon the core concepts, explore their various levels, identify the key roles, and understand them through practical real-world examples. What is a data model? Imagine you're building a house. Before laying bricks, you need a blueprint. In the data world, this blueprint is called a data model. It's a visual representation of data showing how it's organized, related, and how it should flow. Why do you need it? Data modeling acts as a communication tool. It helps different teams like developers, analysts, and business stakeholders understand the system structure by speaking a common language. It reduces the risk of crashes and makes system maintenance easier. Just like how a well-designed home keeps you organized and efficient, a well-designed database does the same for your business. Let's look at the hierarchy of this. There are three levels of data models. Conceptual data model, logical data model, and physical data model. Let's understand what each data type represents. Conceptual data model is like putting your vision of your dream home on paper. How many rooms and how they should be connected, etc. Meaning, conceptual data model provides a big picture of the system. This aims to capture the overall structure of the data within the business context without going into the technical details of how the data will be stored or processed. It mainly focuses on significant entities and their relationships which non-technical business stakeholders can easily understand. For instance, in a retail business scenario, the conceptual data model identifies key entities such as customer, order, and product. How do they relate? Customers place orders and orders contain products. If you notice, the focus is on high-level business entities and their direct relationships, but not on the details like their attribute names and their data types. Who develops it? A data architect with insights from business stakeholders is responsible for developing it. They translate business needs into a structured data model, ensuring the model is robust enough to support business processes. Stepping into the next phase, logical data model. If a conceptual data model is the vision for your dream home, then the logical data model is the detailed floor plan that specifies where the furniture goes, the type of fixtures you use, and how the plumbing and electrical systems are arranged with all these kinds of details. In a sense, the logical data model takes the big picture view provided by the conceptual data model and refines it into a more detailed blueprint. It starts to look at how data is structured explicitly within the system, considering the types of data like strings, integers, and the precise relationships like primary keys, foreign keys. See, we started getting a bit technical here. That way, logical data model acts as a bridge between the high-level business concepts and the technical implementation. Returning to our previous retail business example, the logical data model would add more details to the customer, order, and product entities. For customers, we'd now specify attributes like customer ID, name, email address. For products, product ID and product name. For orders, we'd include order ID, order date, customer ID and product ID. Wait a second. Why did we add customer ID and product ID in the orders entity while they are part of their original customer and product tables respectively. Let's talk about that. 
customers place orders through a customer id so a customer id is the attribute that links a customer to their orders orders contain products and this relation between products and orders is identified by a product id that's why you see the primary keys from the original entities as a foreign keys in their related entities in the earlier model we provided relationships between the entities but did not specify how to establish them now we are defining that thus the logical data model translates business needs into technical requirements it's the detailed plan that ensures our data house is not only well designed but also structurally sound and ready for the builders to step in again who develops it a data architect crafts the logical data model collaborating with system analysts and data engineers they take broad strokes from the prior model and turn them into a workable plan now we have reached the physical data model our construction site here the vision and detailed floor plans turn into tangible reality where we choose the bricks lay the pipes and paint the walls meaning it is where we get hands on with the data it's about turning our logical structures into a working database with all the technical specifications sql data types primary keys foreign keys the indexes that speed up the queries and the constraints that ensure data integrity see we got completely technical by the time we reached this point referring to our retail business scenario the customer order and product entities from the logical data model are now transformed into actual database tables customer id becomes an integer primary key and email address is defined as the unique varchar column the relationships also move from concept to reality foreign keys are implemented to ensure that orders are always associated with the customer and that order line items are linked to the specific products as one product can be part of multiple orders the one to many relationship between product and orders is enforced through foreign keys and this is to ensure database integrity remember in the previous logical data model we have defined primary and foreign keys while here we enforce them through database rules at this level the focus is on efficiency and precision the physical data model is the final step before the database goes live it's the last check to ensure that every data element is placed correctly just like the final inspection before you move into your new home who develops this again a data architect in collaboration with database administrator and data engineers in some organizations especially the smaller ones or those following agile methodologies these roles might overlap or sometimes be performed by a single individual with the required expertise also in reality all three data models are often compressed into one modeling exercise however breaking the process down into these three levels can be valuable as each step lays a foundation for the next lastly we acknowledge that both homes and databases require maintenance and evolution over time the data models are living blueprints as business needs change our models must adapt thank you for joining me on this exploration of data modeling if you have found value in this journey subscribe and stay tuned for more insights see you in the next video